The longevity economy is an intriguing concept. We always tend to define a concept in a frame because we need it. I think society needs it. And uh, realizing that we're getting older as a society, we will try to define first what was defined as a silver economy. But then we realized we're shifting from an aging society to a longevity society. Despite all the attempts in framing a size of the longevity economy, I think the r 2 d little last uh, evaluation of the whole pot of the longevity economy is around 118 trillions. The fact that it's still very hard to capture it practically, I think yeah. it's one of the I would say it's greatest challenge and opportunity we have today. We know that health is basically defined by five main domains. Uh, environmental, medical, genetic, uh, behavioral and societal. Uh, defining the longevity economy needs to interface these dimensions. We tend to think always only or mainly from the medical factors, which where I guess it's where we put in most of our, let me say, economic energies. But if you think that behavioral and societal factor, more or less, we could discuss about the percentages, but we know that weights more or less 60% of the world uh, influence on our health. Uh, it means that the longevity economy needs a must interface, not simply the medical sector, but all those other dimensions. So the opportunities for the longevity economies are in transportation, in travel, in food and nutrition, in what we drink, in what we breathe, in how we uh, somehow drive a car. Uh, all factors that I think makes this economy uh, pretty broad and at the same time harder to define. Yeah, this is a new demo demographic revolution if we can say that. And I think that the concept of longevity has a lot to do also with the scientific community as a whole. We all know that we have a higher life expectancy now. And for instance, uh, normally what we say is that a, a baby girl that is just born in Japan now, today in this moment, has the highest chance to reach 100 years of age. So we are really facing a problem for our society and a complete demographic revolution. And in my opinion, the concept of longevity has a lot to do also with the concept of brain health. So on the concept of keeping our brain functioning, our keeping our brain healthy and our brain integrity. And this is a, a general concept that is now embraced also by the uh, World Health Organization that define brain health as one of the major health challenge for the future. And we also managed to uh, calculate, in a sense, the cost of brain diseases in Europe that is accounting for about 800 billion euros per year. It's hard to say that longevity is not the brain first. Then obviously we always tend to see mainly the physical burden that happens later in life, but also we know how much challenges we have from a mental perspective. So I think it's so important that we keep it up uh, from that side. Also there's one dimension, we're in Milano today talking, and I think it's something related to the economical factor. Uh, I think in Milano, at the stock exchange, we have 74.4 companies which are family owned, meaning that there is a sort of a heritage that goes through the economic, let me say, uh, texture, the fabric of the countries like Italy, for example, where this kind of uh, idea of transferring the knowledge and it's a matter of longevity and it's an economy of longevity. So there is an, a longevity of companies that goes generation after generation and becoming relevant for the country itself, but for the global economy. And this brings a little bit to the concept of brain capital, isn't that? Because this is a really new concept that is uh, tightly linked to the concept of brain health because brain capital is uh, capitalizing on the competence of an individual also on the capability of the individual to participate to the, to the society as a whole, to the economy, to the culture, to the system of the society. And I think that the economist pointed out a few years ago, saying that if a society can invest or a government can invest on what we can define the brain capital of an individual or a society as a whole, this is a sort of the best buy, because it means that we are really able to capitalize on the resources that we have 
entirely on the society, on all the individuals that are participating to the life of the society. No? But in my opinion, the cultural environment of a city like Milano is really important for what I really prefer as a scientific domain on brain research, which is the brain plasticity. As I said, it's the capacity of our brain and us as individuals to adapt and modify continuously to the stimulus that we are receiving from outside. And Milano is giving us a lot of stimuli and is really preserving this capacity of adaptation along the different uh, period of our life uh, for, for many, many years. My university, Università Statale di Milano, is uh, really investing a lot of effort to bring there the whole repertoire of departments that are dealing with the basic research, applied research, translational research. So we are really bringing there the whole uh, bench of science into the district. We are moving the 13 uh, departments and 20,000 people. So it's really let's say, populating an area. And uh, MIND is an exceptional example of uh, um, intersectoral relationship dealing with the private sector, public sectors, we have human technopole, we have uh, new uh, activities, we have a new hospital, we have universities, we have the CNR, so the Center for um, our National Center for Research, everybody is moving there really with the attempt to create a new area and a new environment in which we can really exchange experience and exchange science with a strong power for, for innovation in the era of Milan. Again, you said something very important that I like very much about the data. I think that we cannot do our job in our days without a proper amount of data collection and a proper way of intraoperative data that we can exchange. Also, uh, profiting on the environment, on the society as a whole, and all the different compartments. Uh, Possibly Milano and the Mine District is a new environment in which we can create a data collection that can be extremely useful for the future. We need to have a purpose in life. We need to have a goal that we want to achieve. And I think sometimes we have forgotten this element as a key element. I think um, uh, the first article of the Italian Constitution says this is a republic funded on work. So the idea of work, I think uh, it's very important. Work is somehow a representation of, of who we are, who we're becoming. Moreover, what we want to give back to the place that we're living. Uh, and I think it's so important that this idea of giving back is connecting many elements and probably it's there where it's the, the importance of purpose is hidden. It's just our contribution to society to answer the famous question, what I'm doing here? What is my role in all these 100 years or 90 years or 120 years of life? I think that everybody needs to have a scope a goal in their life and in this also uh, the scientific community had uh, a lot of attention on this aspect because uh, we recently there is a, a lot of attention on social behavior and interaction of social behavior and try to understand what is happening in our brain circuit while we are interacting with another element of our society and uh, even in our lab we have just described that we have a circuit in our brain that is defining our altruistic behavior. <laughs>